May 29th, St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi. The family of the Pazzi was one of the most illustrious in Florence. It gave to the state a long line of eminent politicians, governors, and soldiers, and to the world one great woman who in fame has eclipsed them all. The saint was born in Florence in the year 1566, and in honor of St. Catherine of Siena received her name in baptism. Almost from infancy, she began to display an intense attraction for religion and good works, and she made her first communion with wonderful fervor when she was ten. Her father having been appointed governor of Cortona, she was placed at the age of fourteen as a boarder at the convent of St. John in Florence. There she could give full scope to her devotion and learn to love the atmosphere of a religious house. Fifteen months later, her father took her home with a view to arranging a marriage for her. Several suitors were proposed, but her heart was so set strongly upon the religious life that her parents, after some opposition, reluctantly gave way to her desire. She chose the Carmelite convent of her native town because its members made their communion almost every day. On the eve of the Assumption, 1582, she entered the convent of St. Mary of the Angels, upon the understanding that she would continue to wear her secular clothes until she had full experience of the rule. She had only been there fifteen days when her parents fetched her home, hoping, no doubt, that she would reconsider her decision. Her resolution, however, was unbroken. Three months later, she re-entered the convent with their blessing. January 30th, 1583, she received the habit and took the name Mary Magdalene. When the priest placed a crucifix in her hands with the words, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, her face was suffused with an almost unearthly radiance, and her heart was filled with an ardent desire to suffer during the rest of her life for her Savior. That desire was never to leave her. She was allowed to take her vows unusually early because she was dangerously ill. As her sufferings were obviously very severe, one of the sisters asked her how she could bear so much pain without murmur. The saint pointed to the crucifix and said, See what the infinite love of God has suffered for my salvation? That same love sees my weakness and gives me courage. Those who call to mind the sufferings of Christ and who offer up their own to God through his passion find their pain sweet and pleasant. When she was conveyed back to the infirmary after her profession, she sank into an ecstasy which lasted over an hour, and for forty days she enjoined heavenly consolations in addition to frequent raptures. It has often been noticed by writers on the spiritual life that God is wont thus to visit elect souls with special consolations after their first act of complete self-surrender. He does it in order to brace them for the trials which never fail to ensue, to crucify them all self seeking to teach them to know themselves and to prepare them to be vessels of his pure love he refines them in the crucible of internal tribulation unusually the higher degree of sanctity to which they are to rise the fiercer are their cleansing fires this we find exemplified in the state of desolation into which this saint fell after her first transports of spiritual joy but she did not desire spiritual consolations her aspirations was to suffer for her saviour's sake fearing that she might have offended God by over eagerness to be professed, Mary de Pazzi asked and obtained permission to live as a novice two years after she had made her vows. At the expiration of that time, she was appointed second directress of the extern girls, and three years later, she was set to instruct young nuns. She was now being tried by the most severe interior trials. Although she always fasted on bread and water except on Sundays and holy days, she was assaulted with violent temptations to gluttony and impurity. To resist them she chastised her body with disciplines while she never ceased to implore the help of her heavenly spouse and of our blessed lady she seemed to be plunged into a state of darkness in which she saw nothing but what was horrible in herself and in all around her for five whole years she remained in this state of desolation and spiritual dryness and then god restored to her soul his holy peace together with the comfort of his divine presence in the year fifteen ninety on white sunday at matins when the tedium was intoned 
she fell into rapture on emerging from it she pressed the hands of the prioress and the novice mistress exclaimed rejoice with me for my winter is at end help me to thank and glorify my good creator from this time onwards god was pleased to manifest his graces in her mary was able to read the thoughts of others and predict future events to alexander de medici she foretold that he would one day be pope repeating the prophecy on a subsequent occasion she added that his reign would be a short one it actually lasted twenty-six days during her lifetime she appeared to several persons in distant places and she cured a number of sick people as time went on her ecstasies became more and more frequent sometimes in that state she would appear rigid and lifeless sometimes she would carry on customary duties while remaining entranced occasionally from her words and gestures it was evident that she was in some way participating in the passion of our lord or conversing with her divine spouse so edifying were the words that fell from her lips that a record was kept by her sisters who collected them after her death into a book her union with god seemed unbroken she would call upon all created things to glorify their creator and long for all mankind to love him as she did she would pray with tears for the conversion of the heathen of unbelievers of heretics and of sinners in the year 1604 saint mary became bedridden she was now subject to violent headaches and she lost all power in her limbs although she suffered agonies if touched besides being in constant pain she also experienced much spiritual dryness nevertheless the greater her suffering the greater grew her desire for it o oh lord she prayed let me suffer or let me die or rather let me live on that i may suffer more she even rejoiced if her prayers were not granted because it meant that god's will was being done not hers when she knew that her last hour was approaching she gave a parting injunction to the nuns assembled around her reverend mother and dear sister she said i am about to leave you and the last thing i ask of you and i ask it in the name of our lord jesus christ is that you love him alone that you trust implicitly in him and that you encourage one another continually to suffer for the love of him on may twenty fifth sixteen o seven she went to her eternal reward at the age of forty-one years her body which was untouched by corruption still lies in a shrine in the church attached to her convent in florence and in the year sixteen sixty nine she was canonized